Hey, it's Andy with SmartWP, and today we're gonna to show you the basics of starting a WordPress blog. This includes hosting, themes, and changing WordPress settings. This video is gonna assume that you already have hosting, but if you don't have WordPress hosting, check out the link in our description where we have an article where we break down all of the WordPress hosts. The top on our list is Bluehost, and that is the one we recommend the most because it's the cheapest to start, and it's very beginner friendly. Uh, basically, once you find a WordPress host you wanna use, you can just sign up and it takes a few minutes and once you have your site, you can log right in. So we're gonna assume that you already have a blank WordPress site to start with, which all of these hosts will set you up with. So let's hop into our blank WordPress site and get started. So once you actually go to your WordPress site for the first time, you're gonna see something similar to this, lots of example content and samples like that. So you can see my domain name is andyfilicottiphoto.com. So we're gonna set up a kind of a travel blog for my photography. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is log into your WordPress site. So that can be done by going to yourdomain.com slash wp-admin. And you can see this is the login page for WordPress. So when you sign up for your hosting, you're actually gonna be given the option to uh, set a username and password for your WordPress site. So just enter that here. If you don't know your password, you can click lost password right here and just put your email address in. And if that doesn't work, you can actually email your web host and they'll get you the correct login information. So I already have my login here, so let's just log right in. So once you first log into your WordPress site, you're gonna be presented with uh, kind of the default options that WordPress recommends that you look at. So what I recommend is actually deleting all of the demo content. So we're gonna go over to posts and we're gonna delete the hello world posts. We're gonna go over to pages, delete the default pages here. So we can just check this box here and it'll select all the pages. And then we can hit up here to the bulk actions and do move to trash and hit apply. So now we have all the default content off and you can see our site is basically completely blank now. So let's go back to our admin here. And the first thing you're really gonna to wanna to do here is go to settings general and change the title of your site. So I'll just change the site title to my name with photos at the end and we'll do a tagline and do travel photography by Andy. And this is really important to fill out because a lot of things on your site will actually make these show up. So you're definitely gonna wanna fill these two options. And also you're gonna wanna fill out your time zone. And so I'm in the New York time zone, so I'm just gonna pick New York and then we're gonna hit save. And now you can see on top, the uh, settings are correct up here for our title and tagline. So we'll go back to the admin. And it's important to note, if you ever click up here on the top left, it goes between your admin and the front end of your site, so you can go back and forth. So now that we're in the admin, we're also gonna to wanna to change the default permalink settings. So if we go to settings and then go to permalinks, you can see the default setting includes the date in posts. This is actually bad for SEO, so I highly recommend going in here and just changing it to post name. So you can see it'll just be slash the name of the post. So we're gonna save that. And now we're gonna change our WordPress theme. So if we go to appearance and go to themes, you can see we have 2020, which is the default WordPress theme, but we're gonna want more flexibility. So we're gonna install a theme that I recommend here. We're gonna do it to add new. And on the type, you can search Astra. And you can see the theme right here. You just click install and wait for activate to show up and click activate. Now it's important to note that there's tons of themes and they change the look and feel of your site completely. I also recommend using GeneratePress or OceanWP. They're all kind of similar and they'll give you a lot of flexibility in making your blog, but for this tutorial, we're just gonna be using Astra, which I recommend. They have a thing here that uh, asks you to make some starter sites. We're not gonna use that. So let's go back to the front end of our site. And you can see we have a totally different theme here, but it looks really empty. So let's add some sample content. So first let's add a page. So we're gonna add a page and we're gonna call it home. And this will be our home page. And let's add a title here also. So now that we have some example content, we'll hit publish. And then we'll go over to add new on pages again. And we're gonna add another page called about. And you can add photos and things like that all here. But we're just gonna have a blank page for the example's sake, so we'll hit publish. And since we're gonna be using a home page, we're also gonna want a page where our blog posts show up. So we're gonna hit add new and make a page just called blog. And, it, and this page doesn't need any content here. So what this is actually gonna do is we're gonna have a page that's dedicated to the home page and a page that's dedicated to the blog posts. So we can set this up by hitting settings reading, and you can see here, 
If you don't want your blog to show up defaultly when you go to your web page, but a home page, which a lot of blogs do, we can actually go here and do static pages and we're gonna set the home page to our home page that we made and the post page to our blog page that we made and hit save settings. And let's go to the front of the site and you can see we have this uh, page here that we made for the home page, and we have our blog page up here, which is blank because we have no blog posts. So let's go in and hit new and do posts. So this is gonna be a blog post. We'll just write welcome to our blog. Now, you can fill in your content here. Now when adding the post, it's very important to also select a featured image. So let's go and upload a photo here. I just have a photo of an iPhone here we'll use as an example. And we'll hit set featured image and then you can see now that the featured image is over here on the bottom right and we'll hit publish. Now featured images are really important on your blog because it'll show up all over your site in different uh, contexts based on the theme you're using. So you can see here the uh, featured image shows up on top here above the title and things like that. So you wouldn't normally be able to do that out of the box defaultly. And we'll go into our post and you can see the featured image is also up here. And you can see we also have our post meta here and it says uncategorized. So let's actually add some categories to our blog also. So we can go back to our admin, go back to posts and click categories. So uncategorized is our default um, category here. So we'll keep that one. And then we'll add some new ones. We'll add some just called food and travel. They can pretty much be used any way that you want. And we'll go back to our post and we'll hit add new. And if you go to the side here, you can see categories. So this would be a good example of a food category. And we'll hit publish. And we'll go back to our blog. Let's go to the front end and go to the blog here. So you can see this one doesn't have a featured image. So it's really important to add featured images to all your posts, I'd say. Now, the site looks pretty boring with the, the title of the site in giant text and the menu over here. So let's actually edit the header a little bit. We can head over to customize up top here. And this will let you customize all parts of your WordPress theme. So let's first go to header, site identity. And here we can actually pick a logo. So let's upload the logo that I already have. And it'll ask you to crop the logo, but we'll skip that. And you can see here now the logo is kind of giant. So we'll go to logo width and we'll change the width here. I think that looks good. The site title also still shows up, so we don't want that to show up. So just scroll down a bit and uncheck display site title. That'll actually hide the site title. So now we just have a logo in the header. But I still wanna edit the order of our menu because the home button should be first maybe and the blog should be second and about should be third. So let's go back here, hit back, back. I'm gonna go to menus and we're gonna create a new menu and we'll call it main menu. Now the location is actually where it's gonna show up on your site. So we'll actually just set this to be both of them and we'll hit next. Now you can see our menu is blank here. So we'll add items to our menu. We'll add our homepage. We'll add our blog page and our about page. And then we'll hit publish. And you can see it's in the correct order that we wanted here now. I'm also not a fan of this blue color here. So we're gonna go through and go to global and go to colors and we can change all of the base colors here. So you can see the theme color and that's kind of what shows up all over the site is this blue. I think I'll pick red or something like that. And then we'll change the link color also, which is showing up everywhere. And we'll make that red. And we'll hit back here. And we can also pick a different typography and different fonts. So this will actually let you pick any Google font. So if you're familiar with Google fonts, you can just type a Google font here, you know. We'll just do open sans for the example's sake. And we'll also change the headings to open sans. We'll do the condensed version so it's a little tighter. All right, so we'll head back here and then we'll hit publish. Now you can see the width, this area on the right, the sidebar, this is the widget area. It kind of has some weird things in there. So we're actually gonna modify that also. So we'll hit back and we'll go to widgets. And this is the main sidebar we're editing. So you can see this is all the widgets that we have there. We can change the order of things like that. Um, I think it's important to have the search and recent posts, but the comments we don't need. So we'll remove that. We don't need the archives. We don't need the meta. And we'll probably keep the categories also. So we'll hit publish and we'll hit exit. So you can see now we have a really basic blog going on and this is a good starting point for anybody looking to blog. 
And as you can see on the bottom, it also says powered by Astra. We wanna remove that also. So let's go back to the customizer. And we'll go to footer, footer bar. And you can see, we can change the text here. We can have it be a menu, we can have it be text. Let's actually just change this to a menu right now and see how it looks. So that's the menu we set earlier. So I think that looks good. But let's also include some text as well. And we'll remove the powered by area. I like the copyright though. And then we'll hit publish. And then we'll exit. And then you can see that looks good down there. So let's go back to our homepage. And you can see the sidebar shows up here on your homepage, which looks a bit odd. I think it looks better on posts. So here's how we edit the sidebar for pages. If we go to edit page, we can see Astra settings here. And you can actually select if you want the sidebar to show up or not. So we'll do no sidebar. And we'll actually hide the title also of this of the page. And then we'll hit update. And then we'll view the page. So you can see the actual homepage title isn't showing up and the sidebar isn't showing up. So with Gutenberg, you can actually go through and make a pretty nice layout for your homepage if you'd like. So for example, you can add columns and images and things like that. So you could spend some time actually making this page to your liking and uh, giving people kind of the context of what they're gonna see on the site. So now that you know how to actually edit your blog and edit your homepage and edit your pages, we're actually gonna go through and show you how to add users also. So if you go back to your dashboard, you'll see a area called users. And you can see right now it's currently just me and I'm the administrator. But if we hit add new, so you can actually add users here and give them a username and password and select their role. Uh, if you want someone just to be able to edit your content, you, you, you probably want to select them as an editor. If you make someone an administrator, they'll be able to change all of the options on your site. So, you know, at the maximum, you might want to put someone as an editor so they can just edit posts. So now that we've been over the basics of adding users and modifying your themes and picking out your hosting, uh, we're also going to show you some recommended plugins for your blog since they can be kind of complicated to, when you get, first get started. So currently we have no plugins on the site. So you can add a plugin by just hitting up here, add new, and then searching on the top right. I'm just gonna recommend two quick plugins. The first is called WordFence. So WordFence is actually a free security plugin. Uh, WordPress sites often get hacked if you don't have any kind of security. So we can just activate this plugin here. And out of the box, the free, the free version of it will give you pretty much all of the basic protection you need. It'll actually ask you for your email and things like that here and walk you through the setup process which we're not gonna do right now. Uh, and then we're gonna go to add new and add another plugin. And the second plugin I also recommend is Cache Enabler. Now this will actually make your WordPress site load a lot faster. You can see here it's by key CDN, so we'll install that. And we'll activate. This, this plugin actually doesn't require you to set up anything. You can actually leave all these settings uh, defaultly enabled and not actually change anything. It'll actually make your site load a lot faster for people and you'll have some basic security from WordFence. So I think it's really important to add two plugins that are for security and performance and those are the two free ones I recommend. And that's it, you've set up an extremely simple WordPress blog. I think it's really important to start as simple as possible because as you build your content out, you'll actually know what you need. You'll see a lot of themes add really flashy things and things like that, but you actually might later down the road realize that's not what you need and be locked into really weird situations. So starting off really simple is what I recommend the most when starting a WordPress blog. And I hope this video was helpful. Thanks again for watching. And remember to check out smartwp.com for more WordPress guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching. See ya.